So we start on episode two then. So we've had our overview in episode one. We've had a bit of a reality shock there, really, considering the sheer strength of the forces uh, opposing us. Uh, we need to figure out a plan now. That's going to be the way we're going forward here. So we do have a number of assets here. I could construct a new fleet, obviously, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Oh, thank you very much for that, Yuklon. Much appreciated, my friend, with that Twitch Prime subscription. Much appreciated. I shall bathe in those dollar bills tonight. Uh, imagine uh, Queen of the Nile, Queen of Egypt <laughs> style. And we'll go with that then. Uh, the song always makes me say, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Right, let's get the music going again. I wish the music was something we could have going consistently, because it's so good. It really adds to it. Come on. There we go. If I know I can be at this level here and actually work with things. You've sent small volume field, exactly. Very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Right, let's take a look then. So we have new fleets. That might be what I need to actually do here then. So what I'm going to do is take a look at New Orleans port then. So, right, or after the fleet is raised, you need to assign ships to the fleet. If no ships are allocated, the fleet will be removed from the roster. So we're going to go ahead and actually construct a new roster here. What we need to do then is actually take a look at what we have available. So what I'm going to do here then is uh, get rid of the ocean going. But I imagine, let's see, river going is what I need here. I'm going to be looking for armoured, ships armoured in iron. I think it's all of the new, yes, the New Orleans squadron is quite large. So we do have timber gunboat here. No armor then. Schooner. We have cotton clad, ram, cotton clad. Uh, a considerable amount of cotton clads. An unbelievable amount of cotton clads. <laughs> but they can work. We can manage with those. And cotton clad rams. Now, that does make me wonder then, so the cotton-clad ram, uh, was that actually a ship that would ram the enemy? Oh, how are you on pulses? We haven't yet taken a look at pulses as of yet. We will do soon. So, I think what we need to do then is essentially take the cotton-clads, at least a good number of the cotton-clads, enough to actually change the, uh, the game <laughs> in terms of numbers of river. So, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the cotton-clads that can actually be of use to us. So I'm going to place you there. Can somebody try to remember the names? Because I'm going to end up forgetting here. I think a number of cotton clads set north of the river could actually make a considerable difference to our efforts here. Whoops. God damn it. Um, let's go back here. Come on, game. There we go. Right, so we have the James River Squadron here. The New Orleans Squadron, the Mississippi River Squadron. Right. So this is our new squadron here, which is the Farron Squadron. Okay. Maybe Louisiana too. Okay, so these are ships that are in harbour. It's interesting that you can actually take ships from these harbours, and I don't know if it actually... It's kind of strange how it works with the shipping, actually, it's most in time. Are they available as of yet? They're like somewhat greyed out, which is interesting. So I wonder if they actually become uh, return to harbour ETAs full days. That's interesting to see there. But I should be able to if I grab the I've grabbed the right ship, it show me a different ship here, though. That's strange. I did not mean to move you in here. <laughs> I did not mean to move you in here. Uh, but okay, I'm gonna leave you in here while you are there. How fast are you? Your seven knots. These fellows are Eight knots. Oh, they'll, they'll manage. They'll manage. Right, I'm going to have them added here. To Farron Squadron is what it will be known as then, apparently. There we go. Now, I do have some... Uh, these are ironclad river gunboat ram. But these are in no fit condition, if that's indicates an, an indication of their actual ability. I do actually have some other ships over here. These are four freight steamers. 6.6 uh, .6 knots of speed. They're not armoured. They are armed, however, and that is what matters for the most part. Alright. Hmm. I think what I will do then is take these ships 
they're not especially great, they're not armoured. Uh, but let's be frank, they actually have guns, and that is what matters at the end of the day for us. So that's another two ships in there that I can at least make some use of. Uh, we don't really have anything else of tremendous viability in there. So I think what I'll do then is take another two cotton clads from the uh, New Orleans squadron. I should be able to manage it. It is harsh. It is certainly harsh to take away from the defenses of New Orleans. But I think we have to be quite bold in what we do here. I think taking five cotton clads, it does hurt the defenses there, but at least it gives us something I can actually really work with. It gives us something we can actually send up the river and actually try to change the uh, try and change the game further up the river. There we go. Oops. Oh, you in here? Okay, you're in here. In here for life. Right, so we have our commander here then. So, Lieutenant Commander Eben Nazir. Ebenezer? Ebenezer. There we go. Ferrand. Ebenezer Ferrand. So he's a master administrator. Skilled in diversion. Let's see. He's a volunteer. He is a veteran of the Mexican-American War. Uh, and he's a lieutenant commander here. So, Commander Schooner, Ariel. Right, yeah, we're going to have to take... He's actually fairly able, though. Administration, cunning, very good. Leadership is very good there. Initiative is not bad. Uh, if we were to take a look at actually replacing him, however... Apparently I can't do that. Let's see. Officers. No, apparently I can't do that. <laughs> That's no good. Um, I might be stuck on something here. No, don't abandon the ship. Right. Uh, we may have encountered a little bit of a problem here. <laughs> Okay, uh, please, I, 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 I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Okay. Beta is beta, right. We're going to have to click that just so we can actually <laughs> carry on. I, I don't know what ship was abandoned there, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do there. Okay. Beta be beta. So we do have our other squadron here now then, so that's something we can actually work with. So we do have a New Orleans squadron. Asilaya Kovo, have a good one, my friend. And we do have... Yes, Baron Squadron here. Where the heck are they going? That's certainly a very interesting uh, proposition there. Okay, see you soon. Right, let's take a look at the actual river then. Yeah, see, that's the issue here, isn't it? But I should be able to go... Up. Can I go up here? We do have Memphis. Uh, a large port along the river would be very nice actually to work with. We do have Memphis here. This is a port. I'm not too sure how large that port is. But it looks to be the only port before this position here. So if I can actually have them sent to Memphis, that'd be quite good. Can I have you sent to Memphis? Fleet orders. Patrol. Okay, nope. Movement. Turn to port. Uh, stop, if you please. They may not be... Oh, right, I can actually send them up here. That's good, then. Okay. Seems like I've got to go like this. Vicksburg would be useful. Oh, let's see. Uh, move at time. Okay. Sea movement. Of course, well, they're ships. Let's see. Can we actually go up that river? We should be able to go up that river. So we have Greenville over here, then. We have Little Rock over here as well. There seems to be a larger river there to work with. Hmm. Vicksburg here. So we'll head up to Vicksburg then, I guess, and go from there. The good news is that at least we can actually head up the river there. So that's useful for us. Okay. So they're moving. They're uh, rotating, it seems. So that should be fine then. So at least we have that then. So we can consider what to do in the future, but what we have now then is at least a plan of action for the north, for the Mississippi. That's going to be... I'm going to assume this is a Mississippi. Am I right in assuming that is a Mississippi River? There's a lot of rivers in the US. I need to get like some sort of like atlas of US geography. <laughs> I've been to certain areas in the US, but man, it's one of those. Uh, so we have the Mississippi State there. Uh, is he... Uh, Delta? Oh yes, it is a Mississippi River. Okay. Good, good.
I was a little bit worried about it. Uh, let's go ahead and actually take a look at our policies that as asked earlier. So we do have a number here to work with. Uh, we have one policy spare to use. Now the thing with that is I could potentially um, reduce that down to six. Let's see then. So we have a number of different things that could actually be researched then. Or uh, an actor, I should say, is probably a better way to say it. Uh, so we have the Free Trade Act. Right. Relations are improved in that manner. So we have the Militia Acts. We have a Conscription Act over here then, which might be something uh, fairly prudent. So, enforce a Conscription Act making all male citizens aged between 18 and 35 liable for three years of military service and lengthening all existing volunteer contracts of three years. While the recruitment base will be greatly increased, allow recruitment of draft units, unwilling soldiers will have lower morale and the idea of drafting will spark protests among the citizenry. It is something that might have to be considered, however. Hmm. But that is one option there. We do have here then government funding. I think uh, the way to go might be to simply push King Cotton, to be honest. Hmm. That does build up the agricultural sector. I mean, this is it. Uh, this does strengthen the actual agricultural sector. It increases relations with the European powers. The issue is, it's not going to be enough to bring them in. So, how do you guys feel then? Should we look towards potentially conscription as a way forward, perhaps? Hmm. Well, there are a number of options here. And in future campaigns, you can actually try them out and see which one you actually do prefer. Well, actually do prefer. So we have recruitment bounties. An act to allow government funding to states. Okay. The bounties will attract more volunteers to join the ranks. Recruitment costs will increase, but at the same time, the morale of veterans will suffer and desertion will increase. Okay. So. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know how I feel there, OCV. I have a very rough, very rough knowledge. So we have restrict cotton trade. Impose regulation on the cotton exports to make the demand felt in Europe. When uh, European textile mills begin to suffer shortages of cotton, the politicians too will be more interested in the Confederate struggle increasing relations. Uh, it's a difficult one, really. If we do it too late, then we don't gain the benefit of it. And if we do it, then obviously we suffer. A printed of notes is not especially great. How are you doing that, Mike? Good to have you. And so we have the Tariff Act over here as well. Uh, we do have industrialization. That's not a bad one. Industrial focus. Uh, industrial focus allows higher subsidies to support private corporations and heavy industry, making them more profitable. Uh, we do have diplomacy over here. Um, hmm. Support Mexican intervention. See, that's really quite fascinating, actually, regarding French military intervention there. The European intervention to Mexico is underway as the Union is distracted by the Civil War. To strengthen relations with the Europeans, the CSA government offers official support to fighting in Mexico. Troops are mobilized from Texas to increase in available recruits. French military support to the Confederacy is made possible. I think that might be the way to potentially go there. The other ones are useful, but at least that one potentially might help us. I mean, being able to actually try and unlock French support for the war might be worthwhile. I mean, that would give us a 
yeah, they, I mean, at least this way allows us to import rifles and guns and etc. to actually try and help level the field there. I think we will go for the diplomacy there. I could potentially go with more policies, but I think that might be the way to go there. But that's obviously going to take some time. Uh, we might want to actually go ahead and try and unlock another policy so we can go for... Uh, I mean, the printing of notes here is an interesting one. So, printing new money will bring short-term relief, but will result in inflation. Lowering public wealth. Once the act is passed, the government will receive a large uh, sum of funds each year. I mean, that's it, isn't it? That's the problem. We could potentially halt the cotton trade as well, which is going to hurt us, but it is going to potentially boost those relations while for try and persuade them to get in there. The best one would probably be industrialization. We could potentially even go with the arm and the civilian ships, which is actually something that is rather uh, fascinating there, actually. And while more ships will be available faster, the training fleet will be hit. Transport capacity in the ports will be reduced, allows burden of fourth, third, and second rate steamers with very low cost. That might be a way to potentially take things there, really. The issue is we're at a point now where we're severely behind in terms of actual naval strength, but it might be that we have to do that. It's fascinating. It is fascinating. We'll see what we can do here. Let's take a look at our actual finances then. So, of course, the union's looking very healthy there. And pretty far from the truth. <laughs> My impression is that the South was in a good kind of shape. Ah, it's one of those, isn't it, really? The South definitely did not have what the North had. Hmm. Yeah, definitely the underdog there. So I can see that agriculture there is set at very high. Transportation is at none. Trade war is at very high. Recruitment is at very high. Civil order is at very high. Uh, we have two additional uh, policies selected there. Diplomacy is very high. Industry is very low. Agriculture is very low. Right, okay. Where can we take these funds from? That's the question. Our credit rating is only A+, plus, which is actually intriguing. So right now, we're actually paying quite a considerable amount for an interest. Uh, that's $604,000 there, it seems. So we do have a number of things we could potentially work for. Uh, work with, really. But it is income tax over here. We don't actually have income taxes or corporation taxes. I think that would have to uh, come from a policy, perhaps. And we have here government funding. Improved credit rate and allows lower interest rates and new loans. Now that's an interesting one there, really. Hmm. Perhaps we bug out the diplomacy for the time being. And perhaps we do pursue uh, government funding there. I think if we can access that government funding, we could potentially go for the war bonds over here. Issuing government guaranteed bonds to fund the war effort will improve the nation's credit rate considerably, allowing cheaper loans, but will also lower public wealth. Uh, loans might be a way to potentially take us in the future, really. Because then at least I can actually afford to produce the ironclads. Uh, we can actually then have potentially more funds to potentially place into the subsidies and uh, maybe push it more to diplomacy. That could be interesting. So I think we will go for that government funding there. And try and take it from there. Hmm. That's true. The game actually does have feuds as a mechanic, which is rather intriguing, actually. I will be interested to see how that works. Right, so industry is a bit of an issue here because we only have level one. Well, we do have a number of facilities which are actually quite large, which is nice. That's something to bear in mind there. Uh, goods and trade. Okay. You see, the price of artillery is quite high. Hmm. Gold is obviously quite high, <laughs> but actually the price of gold is decreasing there. Locomotives is a very expensive one. I mean, we do not produce any of them, that's the problem there. Very little domestic production there of steel. Okay. Let's take a look over here at strategy then. break union morale. So currently the union is at 80. We are at 90 morale here. National support is high at 93. Uh, we have morale of armies at 103. 
loyal states is 27 versus 12. We have men fielded here. So the Union has 242,000 men. We have 146,000 men. So we're not that far behind. Naval tonnage is, yes, grossly in favor of the Union. Military experience is 20 to 25. Battles 1 to 20 to 15. Uh, total casualties there, 35,000. Yeah, 82,000 is just huge there. Uh, European relations. Oh, so you can actually see European relations. So 44 there. Hmm. <laughs> just found Walmart. <laughs> That's actually good to know. I'm glad that we can actually see that. So, let's see. Win the first major battle. Capture Washington. Union support below 60. Capture Union City. Capture Union City is actually important there. That would increase my morale there. We do have Kentucky here. Kentucky to succeed. Capture Louisville and defeat all the Union armies in Kentucky to make Kentucky, Kentucky secede and join the Confederacy. See, that's incredibly big there. That's a huge one to have. That is really intriguing. So if we were to defeat the Union army of the Tennessee, of the Mississippi, etc. Uh, what counts as a city? Uh, things are essentially just marked as cities, counter cities there. I know it sounds daft. Uh, I think it's like certain sizes or something of that nature. I'm not entirely sure. Uh what size counts. It probably does say, actually, because we, we've seen towns. So let's see, St. Louis. Um, it's not listed as town. I'm going to imagine that is a city. Isn't there, like, Cairo here or something like that? I thought there was, like, a city there. Where's Cairo? Cairo just... Where is Cairo? I was going to tell where Cairo is. I swear to God it was meant to be there. Uh, not seen it right now. Is it there? Why am I not seeing it then? How strange. Might be a little bug of the map there. Okay. Hmm. See, Alexandria is within reach over here to the north. But the issue with Alexandria is, well, it's uh, pretty close to the enemy. <laughs> One would say. Yes, clearly Cairo is in Egypt, yes. <laughs> okay. We've spent so long talking and we've barely done anything here. We might potentially have things move along here. Let's take a look at where our forces are. So we have a second core here. I'm in the Mississippi. This is probably a good size map, a uh, good size zoom level to work with. So we have these garrisons out here. Texas Maritime Department. Have Mexico down here. Uh, not too much. We're just really getting started. Just about to get started into the actual game at large here. Okay. We could potentially take a look at actually taking this force out here, but that's going to be easier said than done considering the amount of Union naval assets in the area. Uh, we do have Tampa, Florida over here, but not much there. Not very important, is it, apparently? Garrison's there. Okay. Well, the blockade is an interesting one, really. You could take on aspects of the blockade. You could potentially challenge parts of it. But we'd have to try and draw the blockading forces into a battle that is convenient for us, really. So ideally within range of assisting fortress uh, guns, and uh, ideally in a position where they would not be able to easily escape would be nice. In this, is this navy on a game I'll do. Oh, we have uh, ground forces. Yes, we definitely do have ground forces. We even have air forces in the form of the balloons. <laughs> right, so we have the army of East Tennessee here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lincoln's in crime. <laughs> oh dear. Yep, it's not quite out yet. This game is in early access. Uh, I was quite fortunate to be given a beta copy. Beta key, I should say. Okay. Need to try and break the blockade. What is the game? That's exactly. I mean, what we need now is we need more electrolytes. Okay. So I think what we're going to do then is allow a little bit of time to actually pass before we can actually decide really. Right, Hills Core, 
Army of the West. Okay, so we do have the Army of the West to work with then. That's something that we haven't taken a look at before. Right. So we have the Army of the Southwest. And he's about 10,000 men. The Army of the West here is 17,000 men, 45 gun. We have 43 guns here. That is like perhaps the one place we could potentially win a battle there. The terrain's not exactly great. Okay, an interesting option then is we do have our river boats moving up to Vicksburg. We could potentially have them navigate the rivers over here and potentially have them move to this position here. I don't know if they'd be able to move all that way down the river. Uh, I don't know if they'd be able to make it to this sort of position here, but they could potentially be brought to this position here if, if indeed possible. We could actually possibly utilize them to bombard the army of the southwest or at least try to prevent its actual uh, removal from the area. I would rather fight them in the open over here. We could at least then make use of our numbers. If we broke through there, we'd actually have an ability to potentially flank St. Louis, but even then that's difficult. Uh, it's not looking great for us either, really. <laughs> None of these methods will really look too good. Alright, let's see. Movement orders. Something we could potentially consider is we do have... So we have the Mississippi River Squadron there. Uh, we do have the... So we have Stuart's Division there. That's only 2,000 men. It'd take a long time to march them out there. This is not particularly worthwhile. I think that might be a potential way for us to break that there. Hmm. The Western Theatre is one of those where... If we can break through, we make a difference. We can potentially make a difference. I mean, the idea of Kentucky actually of Kentucky seceding the Union is quite impressive. It might be impossible at this point in time, uh, but to have another state actually secede would be really quite important. That can actually help to drive things a little bit more our way. Uh, we're not going to defeat the Union entirely militarily, but if we can actually do it through a combination of reducing their morale, uh, reducing their support, and potentially building European intervention, then we might have a chance. So we're going to start the game, and we'll observe. Right, okay. My brigade has reached the given objective. Okay, super. <laughs> super. Right. Hmm. Yeah, the east is a lost cause, essentially. <laughs> So I think what we do here then is potentially order the army of the peninsula to actually engage upon the peninsula. I mean, 15 guns there is not a lot of guns there. I might actually potentially want to bring Hill's Court to potentially um, aid. But saying that, it would reduce my strength there considerably. Hmm. I could potentially create more cannon here at Richmond to reinforce them. I think having cannon would be... A good idea. But I do have the Riverboat Squadron to actually bring that additional cannon to bear. That's something we could potentially do here. The men are sufficiently ready. They're entrenching currently. Their intelligence is excellent. Their condition is good. And their train is poor, however. Let's see. I could potentially have... So Hill Core. Right, they're entrenching. Yeah, the train of our men is poor, which is, I suppose, to be expected. So, they only have a limited amount of their ammunition here. So, we have construction, we have the orders of the cattle, we have our stance here. Hmm. So, I do have a garrison here. A couple guns there. I think we do have to try and 
push this if we can. We do have the numbers at least, so we could potentially engage them. If I could besiege them, I could eventually force them to give, perhaps. Right, they're within range, I believe, of the Army of Virginia. Yes, the Army of Virginia does have them within range there. Uh, not especially. Yeah, the little bit of lag there is a little bit annoying. I, I, I get that one. Jesus Christ, is that how long it's going to take? Then again, we are moving at minutes per day here, so that's fine. Well, <laughs> yeah, minutes per day, if not. So that's fine. So it could potentially advance upon there. Uh, let's see. Move at time. Uh, well, we'll move fairly quickly up river. Whoops. No. Oh, that's why the game actually starts moving again. Okay. I don't need to manage you. What I'm going to do then is have them uh, halt their movement. So just return to port. No, no. Halt your movement. <laughs> do not return to port. So stop. There we go. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's true. And it's not too bad right now. Even Lee Mash, apparently. Bum, ba, da, bum, bum, bum. I need that squadron. So wait a few days for that, then. 